What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Wealth Not Wait. I am your host, as always, Joseph Quiz, and on today's episode, we are talking about side hustles, specifically a very good side hustle that is near and dear to my heart that I do myself that has helped me through a lot of stuff financially and just build myself up financially in a great way and taught me a lot as well. That is going to be Uber Eats and Uber Delivering. I'm not sure about other delivery services. I haven't tried, you know, Grubhub. I haven't tried DoorDash. I heard some good things. I heard some not some good things, but specifically, I'm talking about Uber Eats Delivering and my experience in it in my area. Um, so some, some just helpful tips and some things that are, are really good is that if you guys want to make money, it's kind of money on demand almost. It's just, hey, I have some time, say, you know, between the hours of 7 and 10 o'clock. I want to be home by 10 o'clock. I got some time. I just ate dinner. Um, between 7 and 10, I have three hours. Let me go out and do something. Well, that's, you know, actually a really great time. Um, I want to go out and make a little bit of extra cash. Is this a good idea? Is this something I can use? Uh, if I want to make extra cash, what are my options? So Uber Eats, at least for me, has been really great. Um, I've used a lot of it. <laughs> I delivered, I think, uh, as of recording, I want to say 185, I think it was, right around 185 deliveries. Um, so I'm not a super Uber master, but I've definitely been doing it for a while. Um, it helped me save up for my Corvette. That's definitely a huge part of it. You know, it helped save up for a couple grand for the Corvette. Um, and it's helping me now, you know, build towards some of my goals. I put money towards investing. I put money towards all my stuff for it, you know, towards emergency funds for just trips and stuff. It's just been a good little extra cash and a little bit of a good side hustle. Um, a lot of things people worry about are gas. I have a fuel efficient vehicle that I use. I don't obviously use my Corvette for going to Uber Eats uh, for numerous amounts of reasons that hopefully I'll get into in this video. Um, I use GG, the 350,000 mile SUV. Uh, it hasn't had super any, really any issues with it. Again, props off to GG. Everybody loves GG for the, uh, being a long-term SUV and something really great and something super helpful. Um, I did have to, not recently, but a little while back when I first started doing it, uh, replace pretty much all the gaskets. It was like $1,100, $1,200 a job, which was a lot of money, but it was something I had to do, especially because I took it all of a guy's green earth back in the day as a kid. Well, as a teenager, I'm still kind of a kid. You're, you're 21, you're basically a kid, so. Um, but you know, I did have to take it all over God's green earth. I drove everywhere um, and, and it was an old used vehicle. So eventually I'd have to replace that, especially if I was gonna do Uber Eats and drive around all over Pinellas County, I would have to do that and, uh, and replace it so it just wasn't leaking oil all over the place. Um, but other than that, as far as wear and tear on the vehicle, other than just almost your basic stuff, obviously it does put some wear and tear on it, on your brakes, your tires, you know, basically everything you need gas for it. it I, my experience hasn't been a horrible addition to it. It hasn't been anything past just a huge, oh, I'm working at a job and then because I Uber Eats now, I have all these problems with my car. I haven't experienced anything like that. Again, your vehicles, your mileage, everything, they vary. Um, but as far as me, it's very fuel efficient, you know, driving around even in the city, uh, even though I go on the highway and interstates and whatnot. Sometimes, primarily, it's just in the city. I'm driving, you know, A to B, red light to red light, street to street, house to house. It's nothing, you know, really too crazy and it hasn't added this huge expense, but wear and tear is definitely a factor. Another factor is gas. Again, I have a fuel efficient vehicle. It's a V6 engine. Uh, I get, you know, somewhere between 12 and 15 miles per gallon in the city. You know, again, that may be great for some people, may not be great. You know, if you're driving around a Prius, you're gonna get a lot better gas miles than I am. Uh, if you drive an electric vehicle, again, the price of electricity is gonna be a lot less than the price of gas for you. Um, especially right now, you know, gas isn't too bad. Usually like once a week, I'll put in $20, but again, that's, in addition to things I did for to and from work, usually maybe like once every two, maybe once every three weeks, I'd have to fill up, usually once every two weeks, um, you know, $20 or plus, so it takes $40 to fill up my gas tank. Um, so 20 bucks, I'm gonna have a tank and that'll get me through a week or two of just going to work and just hanging out every now and then. Uber Eats, I'll definitely need to put in $20 every week. Um, and it take, uh, that's also something to factor in when you're getting money and taking that out of your, your cut. Obviously, that's an expense you have to take out. Uh, as far as how much you make, I know that's the big thing everybody wants to know. I know that's the big thing everybody came here for. Um, usually, I'll make about $70 a night. That's pretty consistent from the beginning of COVID to now. There's been times I've made, you know, well over that. And there's been times I'll make eh, like 60 ish bucks, you know, for three hours, obviously. Um, usually, you're right around 20, maybe 22 ish dollars an hour. That's around what it is. Obviously, then you have to take out all your expenses from that. Um, but that's recently, from the times I've done it for my 185 deliveries, that's basically what I've seen from it. Usually, if you're doing it for like three hours you, in this area, you could count on about $70, depending again on the times you're going. From seven, like say 10 o'clock, seven on, you're expecting about $22 an hour, about $70 for like three hours. Uh, there's been times I did it and I had all the promotions. I did all this stuff. I did 10 deliveries in one night after not doing it for a while. Like the first night I really came back from not doing it. I took a break after I got my Corvette 
and then I recently started doing it, you know, probably about a month, month and a half ago, uh, and I made $180 in one night. You know, that's, that's fucking good. That's, that's arguably more than I almost make it at other jobs. Um, the $180 isn't, isn't bad at all, and that's fucking amazing. But you can't considerably rely on $180 every night. That was with the promotions and me coming back and having all those special things. Another thing that they do is like, oh, if you deliver, say, six orders, uh, they'll give you an extra $10 or something like that. It may not look like much, but after those six orders, that extra $10, that fills in maybe when somebody doesn't tip you the best, or that fills in, you know, covers some of my gas price, or if you take an order that's, you know, maybe a little lower than the rest, that could definitely boost it up to just even out your average, and it, it definitely adds up over time, especially if you're doing it, you know, multiple days a week, you know, you make an extra $5 here, an extra $7 here, by the end of the weekend, up an extra 20, 30 bucks, that's your gas covered, you know, that's a meal, that's, you know, that's money that you don't have to then, you know, more money you have to do whatever you want to do, that's money you don't have to take out of your commission to go do something else, that's just a whole, you know, that's extra stuff you can do with it. Um, but I did $180 in just one night, which is absolutely amazing. The tips and tricks that I've used, um, sometimes I would use like a little bucket, like a little, you know, dish thing from the restaurant that I would use, uh, like a, like a busser rack type thing. I just usually put food or especially if there's the, uh, the drink and the drink holders, I'll put those over there. God forbid, knock on wood, there's a spill or something that's contained in something like that. Um, and that, and you could also section off a little bit easier. You could be like, okay, everything's in the right side of the bucket versus the left side of the bucket versus, okay, I have stuff in the back and I have stuff up front now. And where's this? Oh, is this drink back here? And you got to figure it out. And you're sitting outside of somebody's door and you're like, you know, what the fuck's going on? Or somebody's looking at you and you're like, what the fuck's going on? Uh, having just a way to section off and keep everything safe is a huge, huge plus, especially if you need to take some tight turns because Uber's you know, uses Google Maps and I've had great experiences with it. I've had not some great experiences with it. It'd be like, turn left and it really means right. So I would advise having it somewhere if you have one of those little fold holders. I have it somewhere that you could keep it charged because it will drain your battery, especially having it open. I can leave it 100% charge, and by the end of the night, you know, after three, four hours, I'm at you know under 60, under 50%, depending on on you know how how heavy I'm using it. Um, you also want to have it somewhere that if you get in contact with somebody, especially if you're sharing any ride information or you know somebody's going to text you and you want to respond to them at that red light, just having it and saying, oh, hey, someone texted me. Oh, hey, how you doing? How's it going? Or, you know, we're making plans tomorrow or something like that. You could have that there and, and you don't have to wait four or five hours to get back to them. You would have that and say, oh, I'm at a red light. I know it's going to be a long line. It's one of the coffee lights. Let me sit there. Okay. Uh, yes, we could do that. Or, oh, yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, or, oh, slow night tonight. Or, oh, good night tonight. Okay, cool. And you could respond back to someone. Um, and then you're also always in contact and it's right there if you need it, God forbid, in a case of emergency. You know, knock on wood, again, you don't have that. Um, something else that's really helped me is kind of having it connected in a place that I could also hear it. If I'm plugging it through my radio or just, you know, maybe I don't have the radio on or I have the window open, just having it somewhere I can hear it, not just see it. You know, obviously you want to be able to not take your eyes off the road. So sometimes when you're in a tough you know, traffic situation, you really don't want to have to look over at it. Uh, just having it somewhere that if it dings, if somebody comes out, a lot of time it'll read off the messages to you. That's definitely helpful. And then it's dealing with people is also another issue. This is a, a separate thing. These are things that you can do. These are things now that unfortunately you can't, you can't control because people sometimes are just, oh, oh, so stupid. Um, I've been times where GPS will take me somewhere completely different and then somebody will text me and they're like, ah, what the fuck does ah mean? What do you do? I just somebody text me ah. I'm looking down I'm like what? What the fuck? What are they? Oh, you were you passed the house? Okay, well say you passed the house, you fucking idiot. Really? You ah. Okay, fucking moron. Or sometimes people won't just stop texting you. I make a wrong turn. I recognize the fact they made a wrong turn when I'm trying to back up, and then I'm trying to be like, oh, am I actually turning over here? And it's going gling. Oh, you made you made a turn. You should have turned on uh, this street. Oh, you you actually you walk you out past it. Oh, you went. Oh, you're in the intersection. Okay, well here, make a U-turn. And then when you make your U-turn, you want to come back. And then after you come back, you know what I mean? Oh, I get it. I get it. Okay. So sometimes you're gonna have to deal with that, and sometimes you have to deal with people, and that does piss you off. But you have to be prepared just to deal with the general public and just sometimes just basic stupidity. I had people call me. Oh, hey, so and so, this day forgot my order. Listen, if the order is something I can check, a lot of places will bag them with those Uber Eats do not open stickers. Oh, everything's in there. I can't do anything beyond that point. I can't open the do not open sticker. You can't look. The thing is, well, hey, you know, they have the sticker on the bag. I couldn't check to make sure it's the right thing. The only thing you can really do at this point is contact Uber. They're most likely going to give you a credit for the food and then give you something in addition. Let them know that, hey, they're not just going to get fucked over. You know, and, and generally hear people out. That's a lot of time, especially if, some, if some, a mistake happens. They just want to be heard out. Say they'll con contact Uber, they're gonna probably refund you for the item, if not the whole order, and probably give you a little something in addition. So, 
next time you order, you'll have a little bit of uh, almost like a, like a gift card type balance that you could use. And a lot of people I've, t I've told it to, uh, you know, it hasn't happened to me a lot where they've called me, but like two or three times at least, and everybody goes, oh, okay. I didn't realize, okay, yeah, let me give call Uber a call. Yeah, it sucks, I forgot it. You know, maybe they're not thrilled about it. Obviously, they forgot their food. Um, but they could give them a call and they, they then they'll, they'll get that situation sorted out. But that's on Uber, that's not on you at that point. Uh, obviously, if you can check the items, you wanna check the items, that's, you know, just being a good driver and, and really, Preventing an issue, preventing the maintenance, just looking through, be like, okay, chicken turkey, okay, this, and then friend, friend, okay, cool, I got everything, yeah, awesome. Um, that's always something you good, obviously, don't be putting your hands in the food or that. If the bag says don't open, don't open it. You know, you want to do, like I said in the last video, as much as you can to help somebody out without putting yourself in a bad position. That's important. I'm going to tell a story to you guys about that. Um, especially when delivering Uber, a lot of things I've realized is nobody has their fucking house number on. It's late at night. You can't see anything. Nobody has their number in the street. Nobody has their numbers on the mailbox. Nobody has these numbers on their house. I don't know how the fuck these people get mail. But nobody has their numbers on anything. So I'll pull up to a place and I'm like, I have no idea if this is fucking 265 or if this is fucking 398. Okay, the, the last three houses, sometimes I'll have to put it and I'll be like, okay, this house says 245 and this one says 378. I have no fucking clue what house this is. This is where Uber's telling me to be. You know, sometimes this house is on the other side, sometimes in an apartment complex. And you're just like, I have no fucking idea. They give you the option to text people. I use it a lot if I'm like right outside and I don't want to text to wait around, especially if you're in a not so great area, if you're kind of looking around, you're like, ah, I don't want to be here. I was Uber Eats in the other day and I drove up and some, what I presume to be a crackhead, just threw himself out in the street. I wasn't anywhere near him, but he ran over, threw himself out in the street and his friends were trying to get him out of the street and he's rolling and he's screaming, ah, and then they're just like, come on, man, get up. What are you doing, bro? He's like, no, and he's shouting whatever he was yelling. And then, you know, you're out of light and then you have people coming over and they're trying to bang in the window, ask for money. And I get it, you know, obviously, you know, they're trying to do what they can to survive, but it's just one thing then after the other, and then everybody kind of giving you a weird look, and then traffic's blocked off, um, you know, there's a roadblock, and you got to drive down people's neighborhoods, and everybody's kind of looking at you weird, and you're like, all right, I just, you know, probably shouldn't be here. You know, especially if you're in, in an area where you're not welcome. Obviously, if you're in an area where, um, or just, you know, me, my happy little self is just kind of walking around, and there's people who just don't want any bullshit. Um, they don't, you know, know who you are. They don't know why you're there. You're now in front of their house, especially if you have the wrong address. And now you're this random person showing up in the middle of the night in front of their house. It can lead to a bad situation. So you just want to be very careful and very cautious, especially when you're delivering to things just like areas you're not comfortable with, you don't know, or you just kind of look around and you're like, yeah, I, I really shouldn't be here. Everybody's kind of giving me a weird look. You know, everybody's doing their thing and I don't mix and blend in with, with what's going on right now. You, know, you, you kind of feel like everybody's looking at you like, oh, who's this guy, why is he here? And I'm like, I don't, I'm just delivering food, <laughs> okay? You don't want to look like a target. And then, you know, that could that could help out a lot. It's just don't look like a target, don't look like a, a victim and just go about your day and do what you gotta do, but, but remain cautious. Um, so be prepared for people not to have their house numbers. I once delivered to this lady and I called her and I said, hey, Am I outside your house right now? You know, what is this? Immediately ignore my phone call. Like, I'm like, click. And I knew this, this bitch ignored me. I'm like, okay. Um, I'm delivering the food, you know, and you're just ignoring your call for the Uber driver. And then she goes, oh, just leave it outside. I said, I understand that, but I want to make sure this is your house. You're the red house, right? When I called, I seen a light click on in the house. So I assumed, you know, I didn't, my phone wasn't loud. It wasn't on speaker. I assumed when I call, somebody probably clicked on the light to go into the phone. Um, and I say, you're the red house. And they go, my car's green. <sighs> that really fucking tells me a lot. Real thing. Yeah, thanks for answering my question. Um, so, and the car happened to be green. So I was like, okay. And I left the food there and I walked away. I hit complete order. I drove over and I stopped for a minute. I waited like three or four minutes to see if they were calling me or anything. And then sure enough, nobody called me. And I drove away. And like eight minutes after that, I got a call. Uh, sir, you left the food at the wrong house. Yeah, of course I left the food at the wrong fucking house. I asked you a question. I tried to call you. You ignored my call, first off. Secondly, and then you went right to your text. So it wasn't that you were busy. You just didn't want to be a phone call with me. You just wanted to text me. Um, and I asked, are you the red house? You could have said, no, I'm not the red house. I'm a blue house. I'm a white house. I'm a, I'm a silver house. And I would have been like, oh, this is the wrong house. Let me try and find the right house then. I don't know where the fuck Uber put me. Um, and of course, nobody has their fucking numbers on their house. So I'm looking around, but I would have tried to figure it out. You know, maybe you could come outside and meet me. Maybe I could give me a landmark or something, you know, anything really. Um, and then the house happened to be green. Uh, that car happened to be green. You gave me something else I tried to go off of. 
you, you know, it's your fucking problem at this point. You know, I'll call Uber, say, hey, they dropped my off food off the wrong house. Oh, well, too bad. There's nothing I can do. I'm not going back, especially then because it's a random person's house that I now figured out. I'm already 10, 10 minutes away from this. I can't go back in this random neighborhood and try and find this house and then walk over to some random person's house at 10 o'clock at night off of Uber's time. I'm not getting paid for this. Uber's not tracking my location. I'm now essentially on my own to grab this and then go to my your house just for you to again not tip me and then probably berate me. Call Uber. They'll give a fun you, they'll fix it, you know, whatever it is. And then the food's left there, so God knows if somebody came out and did anything to it or an animal got into it or anything. I don't know what happened beyond that. Um, so not only is it a safety issue at this point, but it's also a financial issue and it's it's then a moral issue, like I tried to fucking call you. It's not my problem at this point. Sorry. Um, those are unfortunately some issues, but those issues are few and far between. You'll have to deal with it. Something you will have to deal with though is finding somebody's fucking, finding somebody's apartment number. They'll be like, it is A1, okay? A1, and it's ABC. Sometimes that's really easy. They'll be like, oh, it's, they live in an area. Not, oh, I'll meet you at the gate of this. They go, oh, I'm 758 building J. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. You know, and then it goes ABCQ. I can't find the fucking house. You know, it's just, I'm not gonna find it. That's it. I'm, I have to now drive around because we haven't fucking designed it. And of course it's late at night. Nobody puts the light over the building number. So I'm like, okay, I have to now find J. And okay, well, this side of the building is J. I gotta go around. Okay, well, nope, this isn't J. This is J1. I gotta now find J7. Uh, and then they're not on the, the bottom floor. It's like, oh, okay, I'm on the, uh, the sixth floor. Okay, well, I gotta, you know, figure that out now. It doesn't say, you wouldn't think it's apartment six something. No, it's no, seven something. It's uh, 1,083 is the apartment number. Why the fuck did you name it 1,083? You couldn't just be like 101, 102, you know, 202, 303 for the third floor. No, and you gotta figure all that out because people, I don't know why the fuck they plan it that way, but they do. Everybody likes to be all special. Um, that's definitely something you'd have to deal with. But again, those issues are relatively small. Usually it doesn't add a whole lot of stress to delivering it. It's just kind of funny to talk about and you know, kind of rant about it a little bit. Um, I thoroughly enjoy doing it. I thoroughly enjoy delivering for Uber Eats. Uh, I, they pay out every week. You know, whatever it is, it finishes, I think, over here at Monday at 4 a.m. and then a new week starts. And I get my money, you know, every week. I could do it immediately for a small fee. I think for like $100, they take like 50 cents or something like that. I can wait a little bit. I don't need it right this second, but if you need it right that second, you pay a 50 cent fee and you get your money. So you can get it, again, basically money on demand. Just go, okay, I drove for three or four hours. After an hour, hour or so, and all the tips and everything's entered in, you have your money. Then you have your $80, then the next morning. Done. That easy. So that's why I like delivering from them. That's why they're really good. Uh, it's a good side hustle. You know, obviously you have to pay tax on it. Obviously wear and tear and, and gas for the vehicle but it's definitely a great way to make money. I've made money and helped me a lot, like I said before, it helped me save up for my Corvette, and it was a huge part of helping me do that, in addition to money from the restaurant, saving up for my job and all that. Huge, huge benefit to my income, and it's just something I really enjoy doing. And then I drive around at night, I get to see the area. Um, it takes me all over the place, and I love it. I'm just somebody who likes to drive, so for me at least, I really and thoroughly enjoy it, and it could probably be a really grateful tool to helping your income and helping you make a little extra money. So if you guys like this video, and uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are willing to try it out. If you like it, if you use any other delivery service, anything related to that, make sure you leave it in the comments below. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.